Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Several months ago on this program, while discussing a couple that crashed in the White House at the state dinner, you remember that? These guys? One of the guests on the program, when I still had guests, had a theory, and here's what he said. Kind of like wondering about whether the Bravo has a role here, and Bravo's owned by NBC, and NBC has been very tight with the, the Obama administration. I just wonder if there's some play to get extra publicity for the reality show. Watch my face here. I was like, what? You gotta be kidding me. It was a, a couple from a reality show, and the liberal bloggers went crazy. Oh, Glenn Beck, he's tying on. Really? Here's an update for you today. The newest Real Housewives of DC cast member, Salahi, the White House crasher. Guess what? They filmed the first episode the night they crashed the party. Now turning real incidences crashing into the White House dinner into a reality show drama. We're fictionalizing the incident. Tonight, tonight, I want to try to, I want to try to turn things back upside the other way. I want to do the opposite. What happens when fiction becomes reality? I'm going to show you what those people who, who write fiction for a living have been saying, and they're starting to be right, and how the government has been relying on their brilliant minds, but now, maybe not so much. Tonight, next. We have a uh, studio audience here tonight. It's going to be kind of a different show. I have a couple of guests with you, and I, 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 I guess the point of this show for a while has been trying to get you to think outside of the box, try to get you to change the way you think. Pause the show. Set your DVR, because you're going to want to take your time with this one, I hope. It's going to require some imagination. We have a studio audience here. And I want, to start, I want to start with a blackboard. I want to start here. I want you to look at these things. Pushing away Israel and Britain, our allies, our traditional allies. We're overspending. Did you hear the latest? Do you know what our unfunded liability? Last night I told you it was $109 trillion. There's an update on that. You know how much it is now? $130 trillion. Why not? We couldn't pay for it before. So we have overspending, we have uh, cap and trade, we have net neutrality, corruption, Marxists in the White House. Each, each one of these things is a problem. Overspending, global government. But, but are they related? I mean, what the media and everybody else wants you to do is just take and look at one thing, oh, Glenn Beck, he's always trying to tie things together. Well, let me ask you, is government health care, overspending, and global government, are they, are they connected or not? I contend they are. But nobody wants to seem to connect the dots. Nobody wants to show you and put all the puzzle pieces together. Well, that's insane. I was sitting in my office this morning and I was thinking about it. It's called data points. In what walk of life do you not put data points together? When banks or investors look at the economy and say, should we do this or not? You want to expand your business. Do you look at one thing or a variety of factors if you want to predict what's coming? Banks, economic indicators, okay? What's the real GDP? What's the consumer price index? The non-farm payroll, employment, the housing starts, the industrial production, retail sales. What is the Baltic dry index? What, is, what do all they mean? You look at the 10-year treasury bond, it tells you something. You look at the money supply. You look at all of these things and you see what the picture paints. What does the picture tell you? Not just one thing. But for some reason, we are trying to train America to only look at one story at a time. And I've got to tell you something. It's this stupid system that we have. It's this, this ridiculous television thing where they can't really even explain anything. To, no, that's bull crap. They can. They just won't. 
They won't take the time to figure out how to explain it, how to make it entertaining enough for you to watch, or they don't understand it themselves. It's their job. It's my job. And it's your job as a citizen to then noodle it and figure out where is it going. You do this in your own life. When you buy a house, do you only look at the price? Do you only look at the house and say, well, all that matters is it's in the right school district. Oh, what only matters is it's 1,500 square feet. No, you look at everything. You get a picture. And you decide what the future is. That's what we do. We try to tie all these data points together and show you the complete picture. But we don't know because we're putting it together and we don't know. I don't think some of these people even know what it is. What does it look like at the end? The media tries to say things aren't connected and anyone who connects them is paranoid. You gotta be kidding me. I'm not taking you to the star chamber. I'm looking at the data points. I'm looking at the video. I'm looking at their own words. If you're a longtime viewer of this program, you may have noticed a trend in the last year or so with me, and yes, I am getting a little pudgier, thanks for noticing, but that wasn't it. We don't have many guests on anymore. And quite honestly, part of that comes from, I don't want to waste your time. And if I've got to line up three guests a night, I can't find three people that will really be honest with you. I can't find three people that will, will really be able to tell it to you in a way that I think they can do a better job than me. We have a kind of a dialogue between the two of us. When we do have guests, though, the overwhelming majority of them are either historians or they're fiction novelists. You probably get historians, okay? But fiction novelists, they write books. Yes, yes. Why feature them on a news program? Well, you know what I figured out a few years ago? I figured out that fiction novelists were the only guys that would tell me the truth. These guys, they have to have their story right, otherwise you don't believe it. They have to be able to tell a story in a credible way. Here's what fiction novelists do. They take all of these data points and then they try to tell a story with it. That's what they do. And if, if all of a sudden they said, oh, and people will have wings that will sprout out of their butt cheeks, you wouldn't buy the book, because you'd say that's ridiculous. They have to take things that are real and tie them together. They're war gamers. And we're fortunate to have them because they force you to think the unthinkable. But not only that, many times, many times as you will see tonight, they're right. And why are they right? because they're intelligent human beings and they're not making stuff up. They base their stories in truth. I call it faction. But they'll be called paranoid. I just released a new book today called The Overton Window. It's fiction, it's a thriller. I wrote it for you to be able to give to your friends to say, you know the, one, you know the friends you have that are so close, you're like, how? my friend is Bill O'Reilly. And he's so close to getting it, but he just won't do it. I gave Bill the first copy, I swear to you, the first copy off the press went to Bill O'Reilly. You've got a friend like that. Or maybe if you need an exercise in thinking out of the box. But here's what the Washington Post said, which is, I'm telling you, it's tomorrow's Pravda. They said that it's paranoid. My, my book is paranoid. I love this. Glenn Beck's thriller, The Plod Thickens. They say that it's paranoid. They fear that it will incite rebelliousness among anti-government extremists who will tuck this book into their ammo boxes on their way to becoming the next Timothy McVeigh. I think they liked it. <laughs> Who's the paranoid one here? What are they doing? They're taking data points. They're taking my show. They're taking tea parties. They're taking all the nonsense said by the administration and putting it together and saying, terrorist Timothy McVeigh. But that's okay for them to do. Why ridicule somebody for thinking out of the box? People don't consider it war gaming when the Pentagon does it, nor should they. The Pentagon should do it. It's a smart thing to do. 
Let me ask you this. Let me give you a couple of choices here. Which one sounds more responsible to you? A. Think of as many different unlikely yet possible scenarios and play them all out and see how they end to be able to predict what's coming. Or B. B just assume we got every possible situation covered already because we're America. There's nothing that could catch us by surprise.